Hi, I'm Stefan with Papadakis Racing. We're here at our race shop in Carson, California, where we're working on this 96 Toyota RAV4. The plan was a low buck off-road build, but I just want to go fast. And what's cool with the off-road stuff is there really aren't many speed limits. You just kind of have to try to stay safe as fast as you're comfortable uh, going. Um, and at this point without a roll cage and stuff in it. So we're going to upgrade the suspension and let's see what we can get this thing to do. Let's get started. In the first episode was really just wheels, tires, get the car running well, and some basic bolt-on auto parts suspension. So now if I really want to go fast and even jump, then want to go towards a more motorsport style suspension. The rear shocks we're going to put on this are a Bilstein bypass type shock. If we were going to try to order special shocks, all valved and everything for this, it would take months. So I decided to find something off the shelf. So this is a bypass shock built for the rear of a Toyota Tundra. And the way this bypass style shock works is there's the piston inside that has the valving. And when it's working within these bypass tubes, the fluid is both going through the piston and the bypass. And you can adjust the rebound and compression damping forces with uh, these adjusters on the tube. But once the piston goes past the bypasses, it compresses enough where it's in this top section here. All of the fluid is just going through the main valving on the piston. So it really helps resist uh, bottoming and you end up with a position sensitive damping. The shocks are not a direct bolt-in. So we had to fabricate some of the upper mount and the upper mount needed to be in a slightly different location. So once we had the strut set up and we kind of had an idea of where we wanted to mount it, we started making the bracket. We decided to use 316 thick chromoly steel and we went through a very basic fabrication process. Once we have an idea of the shape we want, then we make a paper template and then we'll transfer that shape from the paper template onto the piece of steel, both of the scribe and a center punch. Rough cut out the bracket on the bandsaw. Then I'll move over to the 20 inch sander and we'll sand it down pretty much to the shape that it's supposed to be, just about to the scribed line, but that leaves it with a pretty rough outside finish. Then we'll go to a much finer grit sandpaper. So it's a 36 grit on the 20 inch sander. Then I'll use about 120 grit on the Birking belt sander. Once we're happy with the outside profile, I moved over to the drill press and drilled the hole for the mounting. Because we cut the stock top strut mount off, we wanted to fill that hole in. And you'll see a lot of blue tape over everything. That's just to protect the strut from any kind of scratches uh, while we're doing all of the setup and, and making sure that we're met mounting in the right place. Once we had the upper shock mount on and the lower one mounted, then we could figure out the orientation because we're kind of threading the needle here between the tire clearance and the inner wheel well. The bypass tubes and the shock body itself and everything is much larger. So we had to make sure that we could fit it through the whole suspension travel. Once we figured out where that mount was, we can go ahead and fabricate the rest of the bracket. On the lower end, you'll notice that it's what they call single shear. And that's how the factory sets it up, which is fine for normal driving. But I think it's a little bit scary and I wanted to make it stronger. I was worried about this corner of the hub breaking off. So we decided to build another piece of metal that would come down to put the bolt into a uh, double shear. Double shear just means instead of it trying to bend the bolt and basically break off uh, out of the side of the hub there. It's supported on both sides and it's much stronger. I was happy with the spring rate and the amount of travel that it could get, which was nine and a half inches. So we left the spring that we had in there from before and finished the rear shocks. Once we did that, we went out and drove again at Johnson Valley and started tuning the rear shock. So we tuned it a couple different ways. One is just the feel. And right away, the car felt like it could handle the bumps and whoops and everything so much faster. And then also a bit of videotaping. In the video here, you'll see once it hits the whoops, it compresses the front and then the rear, and then it rebounds back up. And the rear is handling it really well. And we were able to get quite a bit of speed, but then the front starts porpoising or going up and down more. And you know, the shock is basically not keeping control over the front end of the car. And you can watch in the video where it just goes from fully bottomed out to fully extended, to fully bottomed out, to fully extended. There isn't a whole bunch of travel in the front, but the suspension travel that we do have, about seven inches, seven and a half inches, the front strut is not doing a very good job of controlling the body or controlling the wheel. So we need to slow that down a little bit and get more control over it. So we, now we realize, okay, the, the limitation here is now the front. So the next step was to upgrade the front struts. 
The strut we ended up going with is what they call an inverted strut design. We use this style on our drift cars and most high-end motorsport that use a front strut will invert it. It makes everything a lot stiffer. And what the inverted part means is that the shaft is not handling all of the load and the side load. It's actually the body of it. The way these go together is you've got the strut insert, which is the actual shock part, and the bump rubber or the bump stop. They slide on the actual body of the shock on these two bushings. And that way, when you're taking turns fast, jumping or driving aggressively, uh, you don't have much flex. These struts come as a universal kit, so you can weld your own tabs on it. So after some measuring, I cut out and welded on the tabs that fit onto the RAV4 front uprights. We made these little aluminum spacers that represent the thickness of the factory upright. And that way, when you weld the tabs and everything on, they have the right width and they'll bolt properly onto the factory RAV4 upright. Inside the strut, we've got the two bushings and then a seal on either end that keeps the grease in between. The next step was to insert the strut into the housing and the shock shaft screws into the base of the housing and there's the secure nut on the bottom. So the way this works is it holds the shaft in one place and the strut body is what plunges up and down inside the housing. And as the shock plunges in and out of the housing, air could get trapped in the bottom part of the housing. So there's a small little filter vent that allows that to, to vent. For the first outing, I'm not going to paint anything. We'll run it a bit and make sure there's no cracks forming. And if we have to make any changes, then it's easy to cut off or modify anything on the steel before you paint it. Once we got the suspension all set to the right height that I wanted, we went out to a place called Gorman for another test. You know, if you notice, we'll keep going back to these whoops. And the whoop is several like rolling bumps in a row. And those tend to be the hardest on the suspension. The reason is because you need to have enough damping force that when you hit that first bump, it doesn't bottom out. But then when you get to the second bump, you want the suspension to fall out and have enough suspension travel for the next bump. Many things can happen if it's not tuned right. But generally, if you have too much damping force, the shock is too stiff. When you hit the bump, it's not allowing it to compress and it's not going to absorb the bump. If you don't have it stiff enough with enough damping force, then when you hit the bump, it's just going to blow right through the shock and bottom out. So you want it to be valved somewhere in the middle. Same thing with the rebound. When you go to that second bump or the third bump, and the rebound damping is when the wheel is pushing back out or the ride height is rising again. So when you hit the first bump, the wheel goes up into the wheel well and it compresses the suspension. That's compression. Once you're over the bump and the wheel starts extending or dropping down again, that's the rebound. If you have too fast of a rebound or not enough damping, what's going to happen is the ride height will go past ride height and rise up too much and sometimes can even extend all the way to the point where the shock and everything is extended all of the way and then the body comes down again and you end up with this porpoising like up down up down and that could be from not enough rebound the other direction you can run into is where you have too much rebound damping and the wheel doesn't fall out and the suspension doesn't extend quick enough when that happens when you go to that second bump you don't have your full suspension travel now instead of having let's say five or six inches of of up travel, now you only have four or maybe three and you have less suspension travel to absorb that second bump. That's called packing up. So the suspension keeps kind of going up more and more into the wheel well and the wheel is farther up and you end up with less suspension travel to handle the bumps. So you have to have enough rebound so it doesn't make the car continue to porpoise and not control the suspension, but not too much to where it holds the suspension up and doesn't allow it to extend out to handle the next bump. So overall, I ended up really happy with the suspension setup. I'm able to get some more speed. We've taken a few more trips like out to Glamis and now I'm finding that I'm getting to the speed where it actually feels a little bit unsafe without a helmet and a roll cage, uh, which is, you know, about 45 or 50 miles an hour in the dirt. If I say, okay, well, that's as fast as I want to go. Now I want to work on getting up to speed a little bit quicker. So the next thing will probably be get some more horsepower. All right. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. If you want to see more with the additional upgrades we're going to do, then please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. I didn't come up.
wrong line clearly. <laughs> I think what happened is if you had been able to turn more and keep your momentum up more, right? You'd have punched through it. And now it started to dig in the left side of beached itself and then. Dude, what happens I came around and the, it's like the sand just came out from under me. The whole thing just started sliding down. Uh, Cause I didn't want to come straight over. But yeah, she was too slow, too high of a pressure. super soft up here too yeah it's down to the skid plate like the, the, the chassis 